Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Only a few more series to go here before we conclude and guarantee our champion here for the VR League for Echo Arena, as we are now moving down to the lower bracket to find out who is going to be able to move on and keep themselves alive and get themselves at least 1,800. Because obviously, for fourth place, it is $1,200 on the line. And moving to my left-hand side, I have Jason, I have Blue as well. Guys, we have Aftershock versus Blast coming up. They had some great series yesterday. Yeah, they really had to fight just to get to this point and really tooth and nail as well. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if they clash and if we have just as epic of a match uh, as, as they had in their previous matchups. And, and keep in mind, we didn't get to see this on stream um, because this was the initial round was done before yesterday. True, true. Um, we got to see 11.5 play against Aftershock and it went like... It, I say five maps, but that's because we didn't know at the time that there was two practice <laughs> maps. Yeah. And we, every map they ever played was so close. It was so back and forth. And I think, you know, a team that can challenge out against 11.5 um, has a lot of hopes, a lot of like high hopes and a lot of good things coming their way. Uh, we've seen, you know, Tutorial Bot as well. Like the facts, I don't know if we ha if we saw the clip earlier on, the fact that he was able to pop a 1v3. Oh, it was awesome. He stole the great. disc and a pass. Yeah. He punched two players. He got past them and scored a three-pointer. Like that, that should just not happen. And that's just like the individual like greatness this team can bring. Yeah. And uh, of course, let's shake things up and hear from Aftershock. I've just always been fascinated with the we are since, I don't know, many years ago. So I started out with the early Oculus dev kits and then just went from there. I didn't think it was going to be very good. I thought it was just going to be the gimmick, a new gadget, a new toy, something I would buy and put under my bed or something. As soon as I got in it, I could see my hands, I could move them. It was crazy. I got into Echo Arena because it was a free game. And uh, when you were moving around in virtual reality and zero G, and you, this was incredible. We all get on very well. We're from different countries. Lynn is the official captain, but I tend to do most of the talking. So I think the strongest member is probably Matty right now because he's, he's our defender. He catches a lot of discs and he's also our best shot. I've never played an American team. I don't know what to expect, especially from a team like Eclipse. Strategy-wise, it's going to be the evolution thing. I'm going to play it by ear. I know I'm also going to get a bit excited closer to the match. Um, that's not going to help. <laughs> It's gonna be tough, but I hope we can do it anyway. For us to actually win would be uh, incredible, although it seems somewhat unlikely. However, it would just feel like a stepping stone for OC5, which is coming up, which all of us have our, our eyes on at the moment, but it'd be a good confidence boost. Tutorial bot, the notorious role-playing AI in Echo Arena. Somebody you don't want to mess with. And if you do, sometimes he'll just pretend he's a robot. But regardless of that fact, certainly a player to look out for. Likewise, so is this whole team looking to try and push themselves on to at least that third place position and try and get that uh, spot against 11.5 once again. See, I'm worried for Blast, uh, for Affinter actually in particular, because him and I were throwing a football around earlier, an American mm -hmm. football, a real football. Um, and, uh, you know, I just don't want to hurt his shoulder, you know, because he's going to need that to play mm -hmm. here. Um, I know you guys have something else to say about that when you saw my first throw. Um, but I swear after that, I was thrown really <laughs> far and long. Um, but this team is, like, probably one of my favorites to watch. Yeah. yeah, Eclipse is the most dominating team right now, but this team is just so crisp in the way they play and how good they are at regrabs. And that's because, again, they come back as, uh, as one of the top challengers from Europe. They are the legendary Ross that almost took first place back at the VR, uh, back at the VR Challenge League Season 1 Finals. Um, and, and this is the chance for Slynn to get his revenge on the other team. This is the chance for Slynn to try and take these guys down and prove that he is uh, the better team. He has successfully come out and managed to take these guys down, topple them down, and go up against the best that NA has to offer in the lower bracket finals. Right, well, let's hear from them. It's time to blow it up with Blast. I was, I've been playing games for years and years. And as I was started watching YouTube videos of all these VR games. Then I started playing Echo Arena, the beta. After that, I just couldn't play any other games. That was the only one I started playing. It's, it's the teamwork on it. It's you, the socializing on the game. And it feels a lot more natural playing VR. Like it feels like you're actually in the game opposed to just looking at a screen and using your mouse and keyboard. I wasn't much of a gamer, but I did play a lot of spots when I was younger. Pretty much the first true eSports game. And then it's got the elements of gaming and also the actual physicality of real spots. To stay ahead of the opposition, you have to constantly practice as much as possible. You have to play with all the top players of the game and just more practice, practice, practice. I'm not really worried about any particular team. I think in terms of individual skill, there's not really a team that stands out more than, like much more than ours does. 
of the European teams, we are probably the least predictable since we have the most varied play style. Everybody else tends to play one way and we're trying to play a different way. I think we definitely have what it takes to take the first place. There's, I don't think there's any other teams that are far above us. It's time to see if Blast can rock it all the way here into potentially a third place opportunity against 11.5. And as you mentioned, they're an exciting team to watch. They play fast, they play strong, and they play confident. They do. They, they really do. Absolutely, and, and it's going to be really fun to see as well if some of the some of the, the top players that we were seeing in yesterday's match. Affentera for me is again going to be the one to keep an eye on. He's a very aggressive player, can do a lot of damage, but as well, very accurate player too when it comes down to being able to score these goals. So he's definitely the one for me on Blast anyway that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. One of the few teams as well, Aftershock, who play with shoes on, actually, that we've seen over the course of this mm. entire weekend. And Slim as well wearing jeans. I don't know how he does it. Like, I'm, I'm dying up here in just a dress shirt and <laughs> I'm wearing jeans as well. That's right. You can't prove me wrong, anyone on, at home on stream. Um, but he's wearing jeans, playing, and like actually being like super active. Like that's got to be really difficult to do. Well, it's time to get it going as we have this match, which will determine who is going home in fourth place and who keeps themselves alive in the lower bracket. Blast goes up against Aftershock in this best of three. Okay, so let's jump right into it here. We are going to have the Joust coming out in a second. Both teams launching to the middle to try and get control over the opening disc. Aftershock will take it quite convincingly. The problem is Tortlebot's kind of alone right now. Tries to pass back to Slim, but he wasn't really ready for that. So it's going to bounce. He uses the goalie cubes to try and shoot himself further, but it's still a loose disc right now. It's going to cause problems for Aftershock as Blast is already all over them trying to steal that disc. But nice uh -oh. defense put up, and all of a sudden it's not so certain, oh! certain anymore. No! Affenter steals it away and sends it back the other direction. That was fantastic. It was just pretty much him against three. And he is able to steal it away mid area. He gets aggressive, gets the catch as well instead of going back to defend. Well done by that man. You can see on your screen with the bandana. The problem is the disc is still being thrown around constantly between both teams. It just doesn't seem like any team's comfortable. They want to just be brawly. It's a really loose volley right now with neither team being able to get consistent control. Blast are going to be able to move in now and take decent control as Lone Gecko will finally hold control of it himself and try to get rid of it. Try to send it further up the field. Let's see if he can do just that. They do have Aventura pushed up with the help of Boop as well. Slim's going to be a little bit far back, but look at also Tutorial Bot. Nowhere to be seen. He's actually, I think, given up on this one. Not able to actually get in there in time. The Blast is coming in with a quick two-pointer. Take the lead. Minute and six in. Haven't really seen that aggressive play just yet out of them, but this is where we typically see it. Whenever they score and the other team's forced to pick up the disc is when they get super fast-paced and they're able to just charge straight in with Boop and Lone Gecko. Probably two of the best players we've seen in re-grabbing. It's basically just boop, bringing it down to a 1v1. Once more, as you might have seen in the middle of the game there, then have one player with a bit of a lag out real quick. So we're just going to work on fixing that, or the sensor's lost connection or something like that. So we're just going to work on fixing that real quick, and then we will jump right back into the game. Oh, he's being told. I was like, what is he doing? Oh, he's being told what's happening. Or maybe he's having some uh, some issues as well here. Just get these sorted out. Just look at the sky in game. Thinks it's pretty. Is there a sky in game? I don't um, think there is. I think the arena is like. A simulation. Well, how can there be? A, how can there be a sky when it's zero gravity? There's no up or down. I suppose. <laughs> it's all relative, right? You might be right there. Come on, keep hitting me with more. <laughs> I'm gonna keep disproving you. I got I, this. I, I don't. I, yeah, I mean, you stumped me. No, I guess. I guess you could uh, base it based off the direction of the text that's on the walls. That would, uh, that would prove an up and down, maybe. See, good yeah. job. Good yeah. job. You kept at it. You got me. I had no comeback for that one. <laughs> um, yeah, just like the players trying to get comfortable here. I believe that score will stick. Uh, maybe one of the admins can just inform us to make 100% sure that 2-0 will be there. Because we did see Tutorial Bot on the side of Blast, um, and he just wasn't moving. And I just got word there, so it will be confirmed. So it will be 2-0 for Blast. And we should hopefully be getting back in shortly. Just looking at the stage. Looks like Tutorial Bot. Looks like things, I think, have been sorted out for him. Still just going to be talking to one of the admins. But then again, Blue. Again, we do this for the Eclipse game. Let's do it for this one. What's your predictions coming into this match? This one is very much up in the air for me. I would personally say Aftershock, but it's really it's, it would, yeah. I would say Aftershock personally because they've been they've been making waves at this event, and a few other players that I was talking to seem to think that they might be able to take it as well. Nice making waves. Got it. Yeah, that was a Kolaris level uh, joke right that there. That was a complete accident, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was perfect. I I am actually going to go the other way. Um, I'm going to go with Blast on this one, and I, I feel like it's just the superior movement they have and the pressure they can apply is very strong. It's just whether or not teams can kind of adapt to this, this sort of style that they're able to play. We, we've seen as well that they've been able to change things up like that before in some of the prior games. Aftershock coming in as the, the number three seed from Europe. Uh, Blast coming in as the number one seed. 
but we have mentioned many times that the seeding in EU is, is a little bit weird between the top three at least, because anyone can really beat anyone on any given day. Yeah, very much so, and that's what makes uh, the European region a little more interesting for the folks at home there as well. So we do have the, the kind of uncontested champion of Eclipse in NA, it's a bit more of an open field to a certain degree in Europe. Yeah, very true. It looks like Tutorial Bot has been sorted out. Again, want to make sure that man is comfortable and ready to go because he's had a lot of great individual plays yesterday. As well as, I just want to you know go back to, sorry, what we did see um, from the first minute of play there. That three on one, or that three on one break we had out of aftershock. I was looking at that. I was like, okay, that's gonna be a score. Like, what was Affentera gonna do in this situation? Because you're gonna be against three players. One of them can just stun you, and that's an easy goal, right? But we've heard so many players talk about this man as one of those players who's always at the right place at the right time. And we saw that right there because he got aggressive. He didn't sit back. He knew he had to make a play, and he did. He grabbed the disc in time when they're trying to go for a pass and was able to throw it out to a teammate. It was a little bit. Uh, it was a little bit of a risky move, but it ends up working out well for him to be able to secure things for his team and keep that keep that first volley going for like a really long time. And it was it was really <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So that, what they're doing right now is trying to cut you off. Is they're they're trying to get the time back to where it was supposed to be. <laughs> trying to get the time back where it's supposed to be. And the score is well all lined up. So they're having fun with each other um, while waiting for the, the clock to be right. A couple of Evos in the face. I can see on someone's monitor yeah. back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So it should be resolved momentarily, folks. Within the next 10 or 15 seconds or so, and then we're going to be good to leap back into the actual match here and get started. And once again, as you can see at the bottom of your screen, Blast will hold that 2-0 lead, and they will look to increase that even more. But as we start off, the next volley aftershock will start off with control of it themselves. Yeah, I'm just curious to see if uh, Boop and Lone Gecko are going to continue that aggressive style we did see yesterday while chasing that disc around like a dog, chasing a ball or a nice meaty steak. Was that, that pressure they applied was just so hard for teams to deal with. Uh, and we saw some teams try to adapt to it, um, but no team was really super successful in, in able to really do that. And as you guys can see on the screen, you guys can actually win an Oculus Rift. Apparently I can't. Um, I might have to talk to someone about that. Um, but just go to esl.gg slash Rift giveaway. Make sure to go in over there and enter for your chance to win one. Absolutely. Definitely get into that and get your chance to jump into Echo Arena, which is a free game, by the way, I believe. So just go ahead and once you get that installed. I will say this, Blue. So I think there's a lot of people who are skeptical about VR mm -hmm. as, as like a kind of platform. Um, and whenever you watch it on streams and, and such, you don't really fully understand how immersive VR can really be. Yeah. The second I put on the headset and I went through the tutorial on the Oculus, my mind was blown. Well, first of all, I screamed really loud because that robot at the beginning scared the crap out of me. I don't know why. I know it can't harm me. I know it's not real, but it's that cool and that immersive <laughs> that it feels real. Um, and it's really just a completely different sensation. I've tried to explain to people like the difference, and it's just impossible to do until you've tried it. Yeah, if you have a retailer near you that has like a VR demo station set up, I highly recommend yeah. you at least go out and give that a shot. From at least from where I live in the U.S., they're all over the place. That place is like the Best Buy and whatnot. But I imagine that there's setups in Europe as well that you can go ahead and find a chance to jump into one of the Oculus Rifts and get your chance to test it out. Yeah, it's definitely a very, a very cool thing, and, and there's so many things being developed. For instance, uh, yeah, we're seeing Echo Combat as well. I guess saw the little, you know, beta trailer there for that. That game looks really fun, actually, um, with like a payload that moves across the uh, the, the field, which is, it's, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, exactly the one in Echo Arena. Um, and you also have guns. There's potential for healing each other and such. And I think there's actually a video I saw. I want to say it was Boop, but I honestly can't remember what player it was, where he was basically just jumping around from platform to platform catching someone, shoot them, shooting them really quickly, eliminating them, and then going to the next player, being this like big bruiser for the team. Because obviously in Ekarina, all you can do is punch, but then you give them a weapon, and we see how accurate they are with you know their, their re-grabs. Think how accurate they're going to be with weapons. It's a little bit different when you have weapons in there. I think it was, I think it was Palador, actually. We were was watching. it Palador? Yeah, I think okay. it was a Palador video that we were seeing from him. And uh, those guys, again, have uh, had a chance to test that out. So there was a recent beta weekend a couple of weeks ago uh, where players got their chance to jump into it. I think for some, it was the first time as well. And we were seeing some really cool footage come out from that. And we, we talked to, uh, or I talked to Eclipse earlier on. I was asking, like, so what's your thoughts on like, a combat? And they, they love the game. Um, but to them, it's more of like a traditional esport, right? Because it's because Echo Arena to them is like, I think it was. Uh, Simeon, who said it's like playing basketball, you know, it, yeah, it, it's yeah. Like, it feels like a sport, you know, and it's completely kind of different style of game. So I'm curious to see, you know, what people, um, you know, will come in to start playing Echo Comp. I would love to actually cast some in the future. I think that actually be a really cool title to, to get my hands on. Meantime, guys, we are still waiting for it. Looks like Tutorial Bot to get everything sorted. He's just testing all of his settings at the moment, at the mo uh, for now. And oh man, 
I think I just heard. I'm not ready for this because it's going to embarrass me, Blue. <laughs> well, it looks like we have another round of English slang for you guys, so let's take a look at that. Wazak. Wazok. Wazok. Yeah. Like, Wazak. Wazak. <laughs> Wazak. <laughs> so, like, a kind of wizard? Man, that last football game was a Wazak. I think it must be like a hammock or something. Oh, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling no, that. No, I'm not feeling that. I feel like it's more of a, an item. Like, my Wazak really hurts. <laughs> that's, where I'm, that's where I'm going this one. <laughs> Go to bed on a Wazak. <laughs> <laughs> no idea, dude. <laughs> That's gotta be made up. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that is not. That is not a word. That just sounds so strange in English. That could not be a word. The male appendage. I guess. The male appendage. The male appendage. Yes. Um, you could call it in a PG way. Definitely. When it's raining outside uh -huh. and you wet your sock, it's a wazak. It's a wet sock. I think that's closest to what I can think of. What do you, I don't think it's real. I guess I'll go with your instinct. It's okay. fake. I feel like that one's fake. That's 100% fake. It's fake. That's fake. I think it's fake. England doesn't know how to use Z's. Oh, come on. I told it. What? Jesus. Tilted. Wazak? That's it's an appropriate card for you. So we're wazaks. We're both wazaks yeah. then yeah. for not knowing okay. that, apparently. Oh, you bloody we're wazak. such wazaks. <laughs> <laughs> how do you say it? Wazak. Wazak. <laughs> I'm going to use right. that tonight. <laughs>
Really? No, I've I heard that one before. No, yeah, we know that one. That one's a little bit easier. Okay. But uh, no, no, I, I, I would agree with that. I also say like, like moving is one of their big strengths too, and that goes back to the series versus gravity, where we saw like the two-man regrab team constantly doing so much work for them in the early game there, mm. um, and we, we see it beyond that as well, just in like their mastery of uh, swinging around the islands and things like that as well. They're, they're really hard to catch up to sometimes. I do think that aftershock kind of equals them in that respect, however, at least based on what we saw so far at the beginning of, of this series. So, so I don't know if that specific aspect of it's going to be a massive strength to them. I think it's going to come down to uh, more what Jason's mentioned here uh, to, to actually push them over the edge and allow them to take the series. Mm. And in the same vein, w when it comes to Aftershock, we see a lot of their brawling style actually kind of be accentuated a little bit in some of the series that they've had so far. Is that one of the keys to their victory? Or do you think that there could potentially be too much focus on that instead of like the actual raw tactics of one-touch plays into, into two-pointers, into three-pointers? I don't think brawling is like the the ideal priority for them. I think sure. it's something that they're kind of forced into at some points. I think they're much more of a team to be free and just have their own movement. I think I, I think that it's, it's like what Eclipse said to us, uh, Colors, when you were in the lobby, like when it came to jousting last season, they would beat everyone. Yeah. Like they were better at it, period. And I think Blast in general are better than most teams, if not all teams, when it comes to the re-grab situation and more of like the situational awareness of where their teammates are. I think it comes down to them wanting to be like be free and be mm -hmm. unhindered in their own movement. But obviously when it comes time to throw down, they're going to throw down. I mean, yeah, Affinter, like he can probably take on the entire enemy team if he really wanted to. Um, I, I think it's like the priority is speed. The priority is they want to play their own game and not be held back, but they will fight if they need to. And I want to ask a question that, you know, you could take a little bit of time to think over because it's a bit more of a, uh, a broader, uh, more difficult question here. But when we're comparing EU to NA, we're seeing NA prevail in the upper bracket and we're seeing EU being sent down to the lower bracket. What do you think separates the two regions in terms of style that makes North America so strong? And I know it's a, a broad question that could require a little bit of thinking. So do you have any thoughts on that? Why you take this one, Blue? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you, you know, first initial impressions is one, NA has Eclipse. Uh, so that so that pushes them like they they have this the whole region you mean like it pushes the whole region yeah well the, th the thing is is, is e you would think because EU is more competitive that their entire region as a whole like slowly uh, should be better yeah should be better more and more but the thing yeah. is is I've noticed the community here is very tight knit so where I, I don't think teams mind sharing uh, strategies within their region a little bit more so I know that uh, we were talking to guys from Eclipse earlier and and, and they scrim like eleven point five they said twice a week so you know that there's probably a lot of carryover coming over where eleven point five is either being told by Eclipse or is noticing uh, things that they can use in their own game, and that is kind of amplifying their own, and that is kind of amplifying the NA region as a whole. Is obviously that will slowly daisy chain down the ladder to some of the lower tier teams. I think it's it's partially due to again like kind of experience um, out of Eclipse. Like every player is insanely good, hmm. um, and I think a lot of a lot of strengths in Echo Arena come down to things like synergy between your teammates, being able to trust who's where and like what kind of play you want to do. Um, uh, these are just some highlights, by the way, but I, I think that's just kind of what makes them so strong is that, you know, you have Palador, who, as you heard from Lemming, is just like always on fire whenever he plays. He's, his consistency is through the roof. Yeah. Um, I, I just feel like it's kind of hard for me personally to compare to compare the regions necessarily, um, but it just feels like Eclipse in general just have the smarter sense of how to play in-game. And most importantly, for any eSport out there, out of game, to do your homework, to mm. you know review your VODs, to see what you're doing right, see what you're doing wrong. They have Ice Shiny who helps coach them once in a while, who was previously on the roster last season. Uh, and we, we make, for instance, when we talk about like Boost, they're a good team. They're all talented individuals. Um, but we, we were saying that we think out of game, they just haven't been able to kind of level up their gameplay by reviewing what's going right and wrong for them. And I think that kind of structure that Eclipse has has allowed them to be one of the top teams. Right, right. Um, but for, you know, for Europe, I don't know. I, I want to see people like experiment a little bit more. Maybe, I, I, I mean, I could be completely like off base when it comes to that. But like, there's some things we'd like to see of like the two on one three point shots of just punching the goalie and guaranteeing yourself the shot. Um, and then like, maybe focusing on movement, which is probably the biggest aspect of the game, like, being able to to be quick and around. The other thing too is is we've we've heard this talked about among the players as well uh, in the interviews yesterday and stylistically the two regions are very different whereas NA yeah, likes to yeah. play uh, more akin to, to, to football or soccer or even basketball where there's like kind of a passing rotation being set up and you slowly just inch closer and closer to the goal line and eventually secure either a three or two pointer uh, whereas Europe is more chaotic. They like to get a very long range clear that's not necessarily being <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry, after 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 is getting warmed up there. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway going back to the point, uh, Europe in general favors more of 
like a chaotic game style where they just go for a very long clear. It's not necessarily being aimed at any one of their teammates, and then they just have a very quick race on launch to try and get back in position and then secure like a three-pointer via that method. I feel like NA's uh, methods right now are proving to be a lot more impactful and a lot more uh, consistently impactful is the key thing, and that's why we're seeing them be more successful overall here too. Fair play, fair play. Well, we are just waiting a few more moments here before we get back into the game. And thank you very much, guys, for your patience whilst we get all of this sorted. As we are ready now to go back into the game with Blast and Aftershock. 2-0 currently to Blast. All right, and we will get directly back into it here, folks, now as the teams are pretty much ready to play. As a note, once again, this is a continuation, so Blast already got a goal before. We're starting it from the timer of where that goal was scored, so it's going to be 3 minutes and 54 seconds left on the clock, with, of course, Blast having a 2-0 lead. Knock it on wood, even though I don't know if the desk is made of it. Just make sure everything's good to go here. Obviously, it's Turabot and Aftershock will want to play. Both teams want to play and get things underway. And it seems like things have been fixed up as we're looking at actually a nice little push out of Aftershock. And actually, a potential long shot coming in. Just bounces off the rim, but it's a potential follow-up shot coming in. So you do see a nice pass to Slim, but again, just barely missing out on this one. They're waiting for Maddie, who's sitting very far deep, to be that anchor wall for them. But the steal's going to come in. Aftertire gets the clear. It's going to actually bounce back on their own side of the arena. But they've been able to thwart them again, able to hold them back. You can see that bit of a chaotic clear coming back out. For now, it's going to be Aftershock with control, and this means Blast have to get ready for the pressure coming out against them now. Slin's going to try to secure it. He's been surrounded, however. Doesn't see a player coming out from the top side of him. A nice slap of the disc sends it out of the three-point bubble here, but they got to quickly Aftershock retreats it now. It's just the goalie sitting inside all of a sudden. They're going to go close up, no. but a great save from Aftenterror. Sends it right back outside again, but they're not safe just yet. They haven't been able to clear it past the midpoint, and they're going to make another run at this, but once again, it's right into the hands of Aftenterror, who will finally send it into the side tunnel. I know the pressure's there. I know you want to get the shot off quickly, but you had a two-on-one. You could have just punched him and went for the easy shot. Obviously, take into account where the defenders are makes things a little bit more difficult for you since you know the pressure is there. But either way, now Blast on the attack here looking for the push in. Lone Gecko gets the pass up to Boop. Boop looking for maybe a potential shot, but again, slowing things down as after off towards the side behind. The actual uh, goal is going to be Lone Gecko, but the pass going a little bit shy. Gecko trying to work his way up there, but he does lose control of the disc, so it'll be, have to be Aftenterror. Picks it up and tries to go for a goal. It was supposed to be a pass over towards Lone Gecko, but he got stunned out in the middle of that, so he wasn't available for it. Boop, also falling back a little bit here now too, but Aftershock will get themselves a clear. They're all detached though, so there's no way for them to get a quick slingshot established to get them to the other side of the arena, meaning Blast will very quickly recover it and send it right back over into Aftershock territory, or at least it would seem that way, until the pass goes right into the hands of Slin. Just constant bout breaking off Slin coming in from the low hand side. We're going to see Maddie coming in as well from his side of the arena, but it's going to be stolen Lone Gecko. Gets the punch, he gets the disc, he gets a clear. Not exactly as far as he wanted to throw it, but they do finally have some sort of freedom. The pressure is now off of Blast. This is a lot of time again being invested into this play. Slim with a quick pass up to the top side. He's going to try to leave it open for one of his teammates to grab it. It won't work out that way. Boop takes it instead and once more flips it back to the other side. A Ooh. long range mail slot attempt is going to be a little bit too low there. So it does bounce off of the force field and aftershock. But once again, be able to retrieve it. But as you just saw over there, Tutorial Bot not necessarily ready to pick it up just yet. So once again, the disc will change hands as no one can seem to get control of it. It's getting scary here is the fact that time is dwindling away, dwindling away. A minute 25 left to go. And Blaster only up by two. A three-pointer could allow Aftershock to just steal away a victory on this first round. The disc cleared back to the side of Blast, but they're going to have everyone here to defend against this. Boop with disc in hand. We're going to push across. I think, I think if you're Blaster, you want to go for a score. You don't want to delay the time anymore. You want to have that two-score advantage. Avatar finally going to be pressured off, but passes it over towards Boop. Now, once again, Blast with loose disc. They're going to be trying to get control of it. It is on their side of the arena, so they got to be careful. But Aftershock with a bit of a bad push on their momentum. However, yes, indeed, the goal will be open. Not for long, though. Boop gets himself onto the inside, but he does have to immediately fight Slin. So more players will jump in. Once again, it's Aftenterror to save things and clear it back to the middle to keep the time ticking down. Still no winner. But look at this. Matty hitched the ride, and he's going to be able to get back into the goal in time to defend against Blast. Oh, they punched him. Oh, sorry. I thought they were going to go for the shot off of that punch. And Toribot actually catches the disc as it's thrown directly towards him. Oh, Gecko's going to actually be able to punch him. But look at the mini map's gonna be a big skirmish to get back here yet again 30 seconds left to go here blue and blast only have a two-point lead slin picks it oh. up but it's stolen by boop set free maddie with the retrieval lone gecko is going to look to challenge that he does stun it but not before a pass is sent over to tutorial bot aftershock half to strike right now they need to set up a passing rotation quickly to get this closer even just inside of the two-point zone to trigger a would be acceptable there's the opportunity but no they pass over to slin to try and go for a three-pointer it won't work out oh. it, but no there is a goal after all it's aftershock's tutorial bot that sinks it in with only 11 seconds left to 
straight up at two to two. Three minutes and 43 seconds invested into that possession and finally able to secure the score. That was such a good defense out of both teams. When it came down to it, Tutorial Bot was gonna be there in time to hit the dunk and to make sure to tie things up. 11 seconds, realistically, the chance of Blast scoring or, well, I have to say Blast scoring because they have possession is very slim. <laughs> but there is the potential to make it happen. And it looks like just talking over to some admins really quick, not sure what's going on here, but it looks like we will potentially be heading to overtime. It'll be very likely, especially with 10 seconds left, unless we see a massive goal scored by the their opponents here. Otherwise it is going to go. Well, something wrong, something going on with Lone Gecko at the moment, it looks like. All right, so we're gonna try to figure out exactly what's going on, ladies and gentlemen and quickly get, once again, the setup fixed so that we can jump back in game and continue this. I know you guys at home want to see the end of this one. This is one of the lowest scoring games that we have ever seen. And the score will be sticking, by the way, so it is going to be tied at 2-2. Two to two. But this is easily the lowest scoring game we've seen throughout the entire tournament, and that's not due necessarily to fumbles, just due to how, much, how many, I think, purely based off how many interceptions we were seeing. Yeah. Really well done by both teams. Actually, would love to be able to see the stats. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we can see that just yet. The amount of saves, the amount of steals, the possession time. It's very, very ridiculous. <laughs> it's very uh, great to see as well. And just talking some things over with the admins. This is just our second match of the day. We still have two more to come and potentially an extra best of three added onto the grand final, assuming that a team can overthrow Eclipse who are currently waiting for their opponent. After this, the winner will go on to play against 11.5 in the loser bracket final. And the winner of that will be playing against Eclipse to fight for the title the best in the world at the moment. This is also, again, the benefit for Eclipse is they get a nice amount of time to kind of relax in between these games and analyze who their potential opponent could be. That's one of the many advantages that comes in from pushing through in the upper bracket. They'll almost certainly be looking to use in those grand finals as soon as we have a challenger. I'll just keep in mind, you know, this is just uh, one of the first times this season we've seen clashes between North America and Europe. And this is all leading up to Oculus Connect coming up at the end of September. Very much so. We still have the regionals in the last chance qualifier to qualify our teams into the regionals before. I believe we have one more stage final as well to try and qualify two more teams for each region. And then it is time for those regionals, which will lead up to the main event at the end of the season in San Jose. I still love how you know these teams are getting the chance to actually play against each other at the moment because you know, I know I mentioned earlier on, but if you guys are just joining us, I, I really like the fact that it allows the teams from NA and from EU to learn from each other and take that information back to their region and see if they can use that to adapt their own style or level up their own gameplay and see where Ekarina can go from there. I, I almost guarantee by the time we do get to Oculus Connect, um, we're going to see a big shift. Not necessarily a big shift, but a big change in the meta with how some teams are playing. Maybe not for Eclipse because, hey, they still have yet to be challenged throughout this entire tournament, but I'm still hoping to see a team do it. Just in the, the few months that we had uh, going through the first season of the VRC, it was really crazy how quickly the, the meta had changed uh, in that department as well as we were seeing. Like, like for instance, re-grabs, they weren't even a thing, if I remember correctly, uh, when we had the first when we had the first tournament. That didn't start to become a thing until we even got to like the Poland event as well. That's when teams finally figured that out and started using that strategy as well. So we've already seen quite a few evolutions in the middle of our last season. It's going to be curious to see if we have that again for the second season as these players get more and more time to figure out the game. And have a we remember, Yumi and uh, Klaus were talking about something we want to see teams do a little bit more is those like specific shots, long-range shots. Mm -hmm. where, you know, if you stand right here, you bank it off that island, and then you hit this island, it's going to go in. I definitely want to see more of those. It reminds me of you know, uh, the Call of Duty days, you know, Call of Duty 4 days where people had like these set grenades where they would know like from spawn, if I threw it at this second, at this angle, on this pixel, it'll land right here at that time and destroy anyone trying to push in through there so we can get some ground. And I would love to see something similar to that happen here in Echo Arena where teams just get used to that because then you're forcing teams to defensively play different. You're forcing teams to either be able to slingshot back in time to catch up to the disc, which we've seen Blast be able to do yesterday, actually able to go faster than teams could pass it, funny enough. Um, or you force teams to be m up more in your face to actually deny those potential shots. So I still think there's a while to go for Echo Arena. Um, I think there's still a lot to learn for a lot of these teams and a lot of these players. And hopefully, you know, the money that they're able to win, hopefully when we see some more organizations come into this, they'll have a stable enough salary to continue to grind away at that. All right, guys, we're ready to go once again. Both are being tied at 2-2 and only 10 seconds remaining on the clock. More than likely, this round is going to expire and we'll end up in overtime to decide this series. We'll see, though, of course, as Blast <laughs> still have... to <laughs> say, what, what, what are the chances that Blast somehow yeah, yeah. score here in these 10 seconds? Well, here comes the launch. Affentera goes for a quick pass over to Boop. He, of course, is going to try to pass it to Lone Gecko. Oh, 
Didn't talk receives me it, and let's see, they need another pass opportunity. Though. There's too many players set up on defense. They've stunned him out, and they're going to take it for him. So there we go. Overtime has been triggered, and we'll use that to settle this for opening round. You know what this is here for uh, the blue team? It's a blast from the past <laughs> from yesterday against Gravity, where they did lose in overtime when they, they fluffed it at like 11 point lead at some point in that match. And you know they're going to be thinking about this and it's going to be haunting them. Martin the Third coming up big in that match versus them from Gravity. But here we go, overtime kick it off. First to score is the first team to put a point on the board for their team in this best of three. And already the disc is going to be out of the hands of Aftershock and look how brawly it's already off the bat. Yeah, this is once again just looking like regulation at the same time here as this is going back and forth. That's a great clear from Blast that ascended over into Aftershock's territory. And it's going to bank a bit wildly. Nobody able to get over there to retrieve oh, he it. missed the yet. grab. I think After might have missed the grab there onto his teammate to get to there in time. The disc will be picked up eventually by Aftershock. They have two players there being interrupted. Turbot's actually be stalled out. The disc is going to be cleared yet again. A minute and 30 left to go. Blast will not have the disc another time. You can tell here these teams are a little bit hesitant to leave their side of the arena completely open for the taking. Maybe, I would imagine, because of what happened in the Gravity game yesterday yeah. where they were just able to shoot across and they had an open goal to secure a two-pointer. Oh. That's all you need. They have a three-on-two. Tutorial not here to be seen. It's going to be the pass coming in towards the left-hand side. Boop can actually pass it back off to Aventura. Back to Boop again. Can he get the shot? And there it is! Boop coming in with the handling skills. Blast will take the first round. Four to two will be the final score as they push ahead one to nothing, but still at least one more game to go here between these two teams. With how close that one came down the wire, I'm now very curious to see how rounds two and three will play out. Exactly. I mean, the fact that Aftershock was able to deny Blast so many goals, able to play so skirmishy, and to actually have a match that down to the wire shows that this series is not over by any means. Blast, yeah, you can be happy you won that round, but you, you skate by on that round. You barely won that round. Um, with how close that match was. So I would not count Aftershock out at all. Our second volley as well, I think being the longest one we've had so far in the tournament. Because I remember when you said it quickly, I think it was like a little over three minutes it took for someone that, to score yeah, yeah, in that, that exchange. So that, that was crazy right there as well, just because of how many interceptions we kept having. Just look at this passing too. Like the mind games are playing up against Maddie, who's by himself. Just back and forth, back and forth to make sure to score this one. That was the initial score. I'm waiting to see the overtime one because that was a think of beauty. Because you know if you miss that pass or you miss that grab, or that catch, sorry, then you could have just potentially thrown for your own team. Yeah, we can see here as well the great defense constantly being put up, mainly by Affenter inside of Blast Goal right there. Saves it time after time after time again. As we did see here, though, finally again, they were able to overwhelm and get very close Ooh. to securing it. But there he is once more. Affenter is stopping it one more time before Tutorial was finally able to secure it. Who else, of course? Be dancing in the middle of the game, yeah, but here after we go. Here we go. This is the, the overtime score. Look how just back and forth they were, baiting and slim back and forth. Look at that. He just could not catch up. Since Tutorial was even able to finally get here in time, but great work out of Blast. And that means we'll be going into our second round. Blast now one game away from getting through to the loser bracket finals and guarantee themselves a minimum of eighteen hundred dollars. Yes, I believe so. Yep, eighteen hundred for third, twelve hundred for fourth. 4,000 for second, 3,000 for second, 6,000 for first, and I look over at Kolaris to correct me. I can't do quick math. I know we have 6,000 for first. That one's, uh, that one's an easy one to remember. But you can see again on the screens in the background, the players are warming up now, nearly ready to go for the second round. We're just confirming that there are no issues with one or two of our setups here. And as soon as we have done that, we are going to be ready to rock and roll into the second round here to see if Blast will be able to pull off a very decisive 2-0, or after what we had happen in the first round there, if Aftershock still got a little bit of bite left. Doesn't a blast cause an Aftershock? It mm. could. It has, to be a, it has to be a large enough blast, though. Mm -hmm. Don't know where I was going with that one. Yeah. <laughs> needs to register on the Richter scale, I think. <laughs> All right, well, we should be loading in shortly. I think Detroit Bot just trying to solidify everything. Obviously, with what's on the line for these teams, not only pride, but the money. I want to make sure their settings are all perfect and ready to go. Just trying to clarify if everything is perfect. So that what we're seeing here blew out of these two teams. Funny enough, I'm trying to compare them to the likes of 1.5. You know, if, if one of these two teams do we think could take it to them. Metamurks was the team to do it in the uh, regional, or not the regional, sorry, the uh, stage finals last Sunday that we casted a week ago today. Um, able to beat them actually in the loser bracket final. But well, we haven't really seen one of these European teams go up against them just yet. No, we haven't. So that's going to be an interesting... Like like I said before, this is like the duel to represent Europe, basically, is what this is here between Blast and Aftershock. Winner I of this... I say that, but Blast did play 11.5. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally the first match we casted yesterday. Oh, that's right. Uh, all right, so we have to see if Blast can potentially pull off a comeback against the team who knocked him into loser bracket. I think I think both teams have played 11.5. We can edit that, right? right? We, can, we can go back <laughs> yeah. and edit that correctly together. <laughs> 
Well, here we go, folks. The second round is ready to go now. The timer's been reset. The score has been reset. The series score, though, is still decisively in the favor of Blast right now. They need only one more to be able to secure themselves a spot in the lower bracket finals and put them only one step away in facing off against Eclipse in the grand finals. Aftershock able to get to the disc a lot quicker than Blast. I don't know if that was intentional to actually catch them off. But look, the push coming in. Boop has a forward pass to Aphantari. He misses the shot from the low end side. It's going to be a little bit unfortunate for them, but luckily for them, Lone Gecko will be there to pick up the rebound and pass it over back to Boop, who's looking for potentially another shot. But Slim gets the steal. Tutorial gets the slap away. <laughs> I just love seeing the little slap come in. <laughs> and uh, they get actually might be able to pull off the score here because I don't think anyone can get here to stop this in time. But I think an aftershock can get the first points on the board drawn first blood. 2-0 for them. MVP to Matty right there, though, as he hooks on to Lone Gecko, tries to move in and stop that goal attempt, and punches him out just before he was about to shoot in there and get in the way of that goal attempt. So very yeah, well done by it. Matty. There you go. He'll keep and goes defensively, stuns him a second later, knocks him out. Yeah, very much. You shot him fast. Thank you. I, I know we're both, like, we're all three of us here are big nerds, so we, I was hoping, <laughs> hoping you get that one. It took me, I had to think about it for a second. Really? Okay. Yeah. You know, we watch some Lord of the Rings together. Yeah. We got time tonight. It's not a fantasy game. I probably would have got a quicker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, into the next volley. Blast going to be starting off with the disc. Boop going to be passed to immediately, but the pass actually is going to miss. Maybe. Loose disc, but a nice block from Blast right there to still maintain possession. Oh, but it's going to go right to the hands of Slim, though, so never mind on that one. Look who's free. To Torobot. If he can just get to the disc in time, he might have a shot. Comes towards the high ground, actually gets jumped on like a pack of cheetahs in the Serengeti. Pack of zero gravity robots. So we are going to see Boop try to make a clear here. A quick pass over towards Affentair will push him up the field a little bit further. It's gonna come down to him versus Matty, but no, Slynn's coming in to try to get in the way of it too, but a bounce off the backboard still works out. And they now tie it up. That was a great shot too. I thought that was definitely coming from the front or a potential pass, but just banks it. Perfect shot yeah. right on the black diamonds there. And once again, for those of you who are newer, it's exactly how the backboard works. The rest of the board, the lighter part of it, is a sort of convex and will cause you to more than likely miss. But if you are able to bounce it off those black diamonds, then that pretty much is an immediate score for you. There we go. Triangles, I guess, is what they are more of. Yeah, because diamonds have... Remember, we talked about this. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't need to go back into rectangles that. Rectangles and rectangles <laughs> and squares. <laughs> but we are tied up. We are back to the score we had at the end of regular time in the first round. And now, after shot, getting possession of the disc off the bat. So I'm gonna go for a quick little pass. They're very close up here, so this could get dangerous simply because they don't have as much control over their movement. But yeah, oh. Blast in the way of it. However, out of nowhere, Maddie goes for a long range shot and sinks it. Another three pointer for Aftershock, and now they're up five to two. Well done. I even think you saw the initial shot coming from Slynn, looking for, a, yeah, looking for the low end shot. But I think it throws a little bit too wide, hitting the island. Looking for him. Maddie's gonna be there, and Maddie, again, the three pointer gets in the lead for the first time. Well, at least the biggest league we've seen so far today between these two. Already higher scoring than the last game as well. Here's got three goals. <laughs> yeah, not hard to get there. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already been able to pass that landmark, and we're going to see how far we can go. Still three and a half minutes left, so we just barely started out this round. It's already proven to be very epic. We've had quite a few stealing goals. Most notable one coming out from Matty there a few seconds ago. They look for a clear here, though, as Lone Gecko is looking to cause some trouble unsuccessfully. But at the same time, uh -oh. Aftershock, oh, we'll see here. The Toriel bot right clear. He doesn't have anyone to support him, though, so his speed's going to be way too slow to catch up with that disc, or maybe not. Matty again, yes! He's done it once more. And now Aftershock of a massive lead at 8-2. to two. I can't, That man in the back is really hyped. I don't know <laughs> what he's doing, but he is... He's really enjoying the game here. Funny enough, he actually looks like our producer. <laughs> back then he just <laughs> run by there. Yeah, he's back in the... Uh, he just went back into the production room. All right, okay. Well, you know, he's enjoying the game. We're enjoying the game. We saw the people in the studio enjoying the game and hope you guys at home are enjoying it as well. Because Aftershock up 8-2 to two with back-to-back -back three pointers is looking fantastic. Come to the launch. Once again, it'll be Blast starting out with possession this time as Aftershock are making a run now. They've got a good lead established. It's just about keeping it there. Oh, once again, it's taken from them. A blast will still maintain control. Maddie's got to be ready to sit onto the defense. Though as it's inching closer and closer, Slynn's going to try to run a little bit of interference and successfully gets the steal, taking it through the uh -oh. mid tunnel in the process. And now uh -oh. they're going to launch. Oh no, they messed it up though. I think they bounce off one of the islands, and just like that, Blast is going to shoot past them. But the disc is still loose. Slynn will should anyway have an opportunity to sneak in here and get control. He'll pass it back over to Maddie for right now. Those are going to place a little bit slower. Yeah, slowing things down. Two and a half minutes left to go. Half the time remaining, and they have a giant lead of six points. Points to Torabot. Again, trying to bait in defenders, trying to pass it back to Matty. And this is what we saw in the Eclipse game. Someone has to get aggressive. They're going to have to push out and force Aftershock to continue to pass the disc around and potentially mess up just like that. Logeko comes in. The disc is still free. 
And Affentera picks it up and gets the clear. I was just talking before, Affentera always in the right place at the right time and gets blasted out of a very sticky situation right there now. As Aftershock will get back control in their own half of the arena. Oh, and a nice counter as well. Someone from Aftershock trying to take a ride onto someone from Blast, but he blocks oh. it out. Oh, oh, and what is that? A massive shot from Boop. Brings Blast right back into the fall with another three-pointer. Boop. That was great out of him. That was fantastic. I thought he was actually just a pass going downtown. Look at that Kobe style. Boom, off boom, the, boom. Off the black diamond, or as we call it in America, triangles. <laughs> oh, you're from America, so that doesn't work. I guess we don't call it that in America. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go, eight to five, Aftershock still with the lead though. And Blast have proven they are able to deal with that slow style Aftershock we're trying to mimic off of Eclipse. Here comes the launch. Shock will see how they play this opener. However, Blast, remember, again, that two-man team, and it almost managed to catch the initial possession. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But no, another long-range attempt, but it's going to be a ding. Well, they almost end up floating in and give themselves an own goal, though, so Blast's got to be a little bit careful, but they maintain control, sending it back over to Affentero. He's going to try to get it through the middle. That may prove to be a little bit more difficult, though. So Affentero just sends it loose, tries to go for a bounce on the backboard. No, boops here. So here comes Blast once again, a two-pointer for them, and they are right behind Aftershock. Boop. Minute 43 left time to do every time he scores. Minute 43 left to go. And Blast are on a rampage for that comeback. Again, the passing, the movement is starting to get all there. I thought they were being flabbergasted at one point when Aftershock was able to score back to back three pointers. But they seem to have collected themselves, they seem to calm themselves down and get their heads into this game. Aftershock, will they have an answer? Or will they unfortunately be able to, not be able to, or unfortunately fall behind? with a little bit time left on the board. Remember again here, Aftershock pretty much comes under immediate pressure after the launch. However, Maddie, we can see the two-man team, they were waiting for someone to go for a pass. They've actually countered it out a little bit there. Problem is, though, it's still a little bit of a messy clear after that from Aftershock. So the disc is sent loose. Oh, oh. Toriel Bot, he's got a chance in this now, but he's got to move quickly. We're going to have the other players moving back in, but no! Oh, it's a little bit too low, sadly. So a ding off the edge of the rim. And that will keep this under their control for now. Blast is they're going to send it back through the middle. Oh, they're going to have the speed. Will they be able to beat out the three-man team? Looks like Toriel Bot will actually be able to let it, but no! Oh my god, Boop! He comes in again! And you know what, Blue? Boop! <laughs> and that two-pointer will put Blast ahead here. Now, look like Aftershock, we're going to be able to maintain control. Came down to a re-grab race, and it looked like Aftershock, we're going to be able to win it. But Boop comes out of nowhere and secures it regardless for our blue team for Blast as they push ahead now with a one-point lead and only a minute and ten seconds left. See, look at the stuns. Look at that big difference. Aftertara and Boop only at two apiece. Lone Gecko, the one to throw fists. Really not investing too much into the throwing game, but trying to play their own game with the speed. Luckily for Aftershock, they've been here before. They were in this exact same situation in the last match, but this time they have the potential to take the round away from Blast. A minute left to go here, Blue, and Slim gonna go for the pass over to Tutorial Bot. So with the launch up top, goes over towards Tutorial Bot. They're gonna try to set up now here for a two-pointer. Slim's out of position, though. He gets stunned out, and that lets Blast take back their control, clearing it through middle. Aftershock still trying to run interference, but they need to get back to their side of the arena here. Otherwise, we're gonna be looking at another easy score here for Boop. And the guys on blast. They do successfully get back in time, they however. for time. Mm -hmm. They can play super slow if they really want to, like we saw Eclipse do. Lone Gecko going for the pass up to boot. Maybe can potentially throw it back to him. You see how aggressive Slynn is getting to disrupt this passing D or this passing offense that's coming in. 30 seconds left. And oh, Afatera goes for the shot. The clear gonna come in. But can they get the re-grabs to get there in time? It's not a clean clear though, so it hasn't sent it over to the other side just yet. Aftershot trying to get into the way of Blast, re-grabbing it, but Maddie's gonna get stunned now into the hands of Blast once again, fumbling all over the place right now as Lynn goes for a bit of a wild pass, it's a miss, but they send Sin flying to chase it. Ten seconds to score, they'll go for it, but no, blocked by Boop, sent into the open, and there's no re-grab from Aftershock. Less than five seconds left here now, so with that save, it's looking like Blast might have done it, and with the time running out, indeed they have. Blast take the second round, nine to eight, with only a one-point lead, they'll secure it, and also take a 2-0 victory, pushing them onwards into the lower bracket finals versus 11.5. Again, you're gonna look at that score on paper, be like, oh, 2-0, what a big deal. But that was a hard-fought match out of both teams, coming down to a one-point difference in the second game, and in the first, being tied and going into overtime for the second time this entire tournament. Everyone on that stage played well. Everyone on that stage, yeah, hugs all around because it's well-deserved from both of them. Once again, these matches consisting of Blast and Overshock just going right down to the wire, but this time Blast comes out on top. That's right, Blast plants the dynamite and gets the 2-0. What a recovery from them in game number two, especially. They gotta be feeling good after that one, and especially to get themselves that third place position, at least here in the tournament. Guys, what a game number two, especially that was. Yeah, and especially after, after how close the first game was as well, it mm. stayed true. 
through it. Stayed neck and neck the entire time. Obviously a massive advantage coming out there from Aftershock as they tried to push ahead and got that great lead going, but the problem was their defense just was non-existent as we got later on into the game there, and we saw Blast able to bring it back multiple times there and eventually take the lead at the end with one more two-pointer. And things get a little bit worrisome for me looking ahead in the bracket now because they're going to be playing against 11.5. And they're going to have, obviously, I'm assuming a couple of, minute, a couple of minutes break. Sure, but sure. keep in mind, let's just assume Blast wins this next match. They'll have to play three, potentially four series back to back to back to back. Got there you it. go. <laughs> That's going to be rough. I mean, I can see how sweaty Aventary is from here on the screen, uh, from here looking down <laughs> at him. Um, but it's going to be rough. I think that's a good start for them. That's going to be so pumped as well going into this next match mm. against 11.5 for the potential redemption story. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, overall a very impressive result here from Blast to bring it to Aftershock as they did, especially in that last match, because it started off quite difficult for them, to be honest there. Yeah, it was, it was looking like as well, we were just going to be, both teams were going to be scrambling back and forth, but it was still Blast holding ultimate control there. It was still a great comeback story yeah, though for Aftershock yeah. to be able to keep it as close as it was, take it to overtime. Unfortunately, again, just falling a little bit too short at the end of the game, so Blast is having a little bit more longevity in the gameplay there to be able to push ahead that at the defense end. defense as well yeah, was yeah. ridiculous. Really good to be able to just get everyone boosted back there and get them into position against the goal, but that is it. We are going to hear from our winners over down at the stage with Poonanas. Thank you, James. I'm joined once again by Affenterra, the unstoppable German member of the team, as well as a uh, unstoppable and beloved player by everyone here. As soon as I saw you in the lobby, I was like, Affen! And just got a big bear hug. It's great. It's really great to see you guys uh, coming back up through the uh, brackets. But how did it feel? It was a little bit bittersweet taking on your old teammate from the Poland finals? Yeah, but we played well. He played well. And it's nice to see him again. It's nice to see him again. It's nice to beat him again. <laughs> we did well there, and uh, I'm just happy. Well, that's absolutely uh, one of those things that we expect to see from here, where the tougher teams help make the other tough teams become much better. We heard the same from Eclipse. We hear it from you as well. So it's good to see that happen. This, this match was also close like previous matches. Not as close as your 11.5 match, but you're going to be seeing them again. How do you feel about going into this 11.5 match? I'm ready for them. I, I think my whole team is ready for them, so we are ready for them. We'll do our best. Now, a lot of players were reviewing video in order to see how they were going to counter the people coming up to them. Did any? Did your team do that at all last night? Uh, kind of. I think we did it all separately. I didn't see them in the lobby that much because uh, some guys were going out, and I just, I just tagged along. Really. All right, well, hopefully you'll get the information that you need in order to go into this 11.5 match, and hopefully we'll get enough break for you to get rehydrated and to get what it is you need. I know we were talking about a little fit you are having. So, back to you, James. We'll get to him later. Thank you very much. That's right. Stay hydrated, guys, out there when you be, especially playing some VR. And uh, yeah, yeah, once again, fabulous and man. And casting. And casting. Yeah. You exert a lot of energy. You do. People would be surprised that I've not done it in the past, uh, especially kind of as much energy as we exude up here. Although I never get the chance to cast anymore. That's not, that doesn't it's happen. Because you're so handsome. No, 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 no. That's not the reason. You're just, you're just, you have you're to be so the, great. Face of the show. No, you're just, no, you're no, great, no, 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 no. You're no, great. no, no. Anyway, <laughs> let's swiftly move on because overall now you can switch if you want. You know. No. <laughs> anyway, overall we have the three teams now remaining, very, very strong in terms of rankings from their respective regions, right? Yeah, we got, what, the number one seed from NA, number two seed from NA, and the number one seed from BU coming to this tournament. So clearly seeding showing exactly why we have it as the three best teams have been able to make their way through here. But it doesn't get easier at all. This next match is going to be just as exciting as this last one. But uh, you got to love that man there, Afterterra. You got to love him, <laughs> honestly. Such a great guy, in and out of game. Yeah. I mean, some nice chats with him. Lovable German. Absolutely. Everyone's been so friendly here, actually. You know, the hotel room, we've been talking to people here at the venue as well, just kind of sharing information, talking about the game, having a really good time, Blue. It's a very welcoming community, guys. So if you are if, if you have a VR headset or if you're thinking about picking one up, be sure to jump into like the community Discord as well. There's a lot of uh, pro-level players that are that are, uh, that are are have no problem helping out new players and, and trying to introduce them to the more competitive aspects of the game there. <laughs> and of course, just a quick shout to Paldor again from Eclipse. He does have a YouTube channel where he does commentary mm. over his own gameplay to help people who are learning or want to learn how to play better to improve their own game. Yeah, 
very much so. So be sure to check all that out and be sure once again to try jump into the community Discord and ask for help if you need it. Man, I, I'm actually sad that Aftershock's out because you heard everyone downstairs our week oh, here they they after on the them. stream as well. Like they were, they wanted to see Aftershock win. They were so excited, screaming every single goal, and they they didn't give up. Most importantly, which I love, they didn't give up. They adapted their style yeah. mid game when Blast tried to slow it down against them, and they tried so hard. Honestly, they can grab this with their heads held high. I think there's a very clear um, sentiment shared between everyone downstairs, which is like cheer for the underdog and the underdog only, <laughs> because everyone just kind of <laughs> wants to see the upsets. Yesterday we saw it very, very loud. This time around we saw it as well, very, very loud. And uh, obviously it's yeah, that was cool. That was confusing. <laughs> like, I was like, back for another interview. interview? <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Affetera wasn't done talking. No, he was like, give me the mic. I a little, talk a little more. bit more to say. Yeah. <laughs> he was going full WWE on as he breaks things. Anyway, regardless. 11.5, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Sorry. Let's take a look at the bracket here for the lower bracket, of course, which is where we have just concluded our round three. We're moving on to our lower bracket finals now, which will be Blast going up against 11.5. And the winner of that gets the chance, the, the privilege, the, the, the honor. I'm, I'm not sure what you want to call it because Eclipse up in the grand final is a monster that you're going to have to fell and have to defeat somehow as they sit up there with a, a best of three advantage. So you would need to win two best of threes against them if you want to claim championship here. We're going to go to a short break in just a few moments time, but obviously a huge thank you. What is going on? A huge <laughs> right shout out to uh, Intel for joining us alongside all of these adventures as you guys laugh at me. That's fine. Sometimes we fluff, but we keep going and we're going to go to that break. When we return, we're going to have our lower bracket finals, finding out who moves on to the grand finals. Stairs, stairs, stairs. Nothing great ever happened without a witness. Oh. Oh. 